Hello and welcome. My name is Merely Adequate, and I'm coming to you from TWS Season 5. And I've been playing my Trident course for quite a few days now, trying to improve my time. And, well, apparently my first run was the best. <laughs> I don't know if it's stress or what's getting to me, but I can't do better than my first run, so I'm pretty much going to leave it there uh, <laughs> and go on to do something else because this is really starting to get to me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so, but I realize I've been spending days out here uh, at my base and here playing with a trident. And if you remember a few episodes ago, I created a redstone shop. And I know this server pretty well. You have to, uh, whenever you create shops, it always helps if you know the server and what kind of things that they like and what kind of things that they are interested in. And there's not a lot of redstoners on here, so I haven't really bothered to check my shop. But I think today we should check that and all my other shops and see uh, what's going on and see if I need to do any restocking and, uh, and see how we're doing if we made any diamonds, okay? Okay, head to the shopping district. It's actually about time to make a new paper, so I'm not expecting any sales, yeah, from here. So, but I do need to keep that in mind. It is time, I think we're in the new, we're in, um, ooh, actually, we're in April now. Yeah, I think it's about time for a newspaper. I always love making this, but it takes me a while to come up with ideas, so I'll have to start thinking about this now. Okay, let's see. I do know, see, <laughs> that honey is me. That's the honey blocks I used in the Trident course. <laughs> so no sales there. No sales there. And, oh, nice, a couple diamonds. Always like to see some diamonds. Oh, wow. Al is finally starting to get to work on his tree. I love it. He's going for this really fantasy tree style. I don't know. Oh, uh, that may have been spoilers. I'm sorry, Al. <laughs> but oh, it's, it's looking amazing. I hope you keep it up. No ice or snow today. And this seems to be about normal for my wool sales. Like I said, not many wool sales this season. I was just running in here to check on my sales, and look what went up in front of us. Look at that. That's amazing! Oh, that's so cool! It's like a whole rocket launch platform with a space shuttle. I'll have to go check out over there and see if I can uh, buy anything from them. That just looks great! Ooh, here we go! Oh! Oh! I was wrong! People are buying! Oh my goodness! Uh... <laughs> I, uh, I, uh, I don't know what to say about this. Looks like somebody bought a little bit of everything, so I guess they had a project they were working on. Holy moly! Uh, uh, the, uh, redstone lanterns definitely sold out. I need to refill those for sure. Would you believe I got more than a stack of diamonds today? Look at me, guys! I'm crazy rich! <laughs> oh my goodness! Uh, that was a huge surprise! I was thinking I wouldn't have to restock anything in the redstone shop, but I definitely need to add a few things, particularly the redstone lamps. Oh my goodness! Uh, <laughs> uh, well, I guess that's the, what we're going to do at the beginning of the day today. One of the reasons why I knew to check on the redstone shop today is because there's been a change. Uh, 1.18.3 came out the other day and we updated uh, right away. We didn't really wait for it because there's too many people. Some people updated, some people haven't, so we kind of need to stay current. Uh, but one of the big changes for 1.18.3, <laughs> it's a mouthful, is now we can easily on bedrock create shulker farms and as you can imagine there's more than a few people who are interested on this server to make those so i knew they were going to need some redstone components and that's why i checked on it and i'm glad that i did i doubt that that's uh that's where i got my sales yet because it just happened the other day so uh, maybe we'll get some more sales coming up but the other thing that was supposed to happen and i'm not quite sure why it didn't I thought these guys were supposed to be selling whole blocks of glowstone and not just the dust. So I don't know. Maybe I need. To, maybe if they have to be um, the, when, when they're when they're first created, they do it. Maybe because these guys are from the old generation. Maybe that's why they're not. I don't know. I'll have to look into that. Mm -hmm. 
took uh, <laughs> about four hours and I still didn't get this one finished because I need more hay and I'm waiting for the, the wheat to grow. But uh, yeah, I got everything else stocked. Unfortunately, during all that, I discovered a problem. <laughs> I made a big boo-boo and I kind of got caught. Let me, uh, let's, let me take you out to... Uh, well, the edge of our building area and show you what I'm talking about. Every large multiplayer server has rules. And those rules are put in place to make fun, you know, playtime fun, make sure everybody is getting along, and to make sure that the world runs smoothly. And one of the things we have to fight is lag, obviously. Well, one of the things that we chose to do on this server was to make a farms or an industrial area that is beyond 3,000 to keep people from putting them at their bases and creating lots of lag. So, 0 to 3,000 is the build area for everybody to have fun and build their bases and do all that cool stuff. And then 3,000 to 4,000 is the area where people can build farms. That, which is perfect. I think it's a great rule. And then, uh, you know, I think 4,000 to, I don't remember. <laughs> I don't remember how far out is for gathering resources. And then every so often, beyond 4,000, uh, it's circular, beyond 4,000 circular, so it's not 4,000, 4,000 corner. It's, yeah, whatever. whatever. Uh, beyond that, it gets reset every once in a while to keep the size of the file down, to keep the world running smoothly, and to continue getting resources, like so we don't have just vast deserts that we can no longer get de uh, sand from or anything like that, right? Well, if you look in the top left corner, I'm currently at 3,937. I'm right at the very end of the farms area. And if you look in front of me, I, I don't know if you recognize this desert temple, but I had a hot tub up here. <laughs> and right over there, beyond 4,000, was my creeper farm. Well, rip. It's gone. <laughs> I, uh, I made a mistake. It's 100% my mistake. It's not the server's fault. I did it, but it's gone. And I don't know if I want to build another one. Fortunately, I have a solution. When Kissick made this amazing shop, he decided to stock rockets. Not only did he decide to stock rockets, but he decided it was time that we had a cheaper source for rockets here on the server. Oh, nope, that's not it. Well, that's good though too. Let's see, is this it? Nope, that's copper, which is amazing. Here we go. One diamond for three stacks. This is a really good price. Now, it's not really super cheap. It's a, it's a, a kind of perfect, I think. At this point in the server, several people have, oops, several people have um, gunpowder farms. And it's kind of time, you know, in a shopping district that the prices start to adjust as the world grows. And I think this is kind of a perfect price. So I'm so glad he did this and I will definitely be a customer. Cause I don't know if I want to build my uh, <laughs> creeper farm again. Those things are tedious. If you remember, I, I'm not a big fan. <laughs> All right, so let's get some rockets and let's head back to the base. You know, as I make these videos, I do things sometimes over and over. I check my inventory in my shops. I mark my desk in the death book, you know, things like that. And I love telling you guys about them and finding new and interesting ways to explain what I'm doing and what's going on. Well, guess what? This is my new and interesting, inter <laughs> interesting way to tell you. I have a new platform and we're going to build a new temple today. Woohoo! This temple today is going to be for Hephaestus. He's the ugly forgotten god in Greek mythology. Uh, he was a son of Hera, but when he was born, she deemed him so ugly that she banished him from Olympus and sent him to Earth. 
And while he was there, he became a master blacksmith. Uh, that's why he's called the God of the Forge. He became so amazing that he created things that even the gods wanted. As a matter of fact, he made a throne that was so beautiful that his mother, Hera, wanted to sit on it. But when she did, it was a trap and he had ensnared her and wouldn't let her go until Zeus gave permission for him to come back to Olympus. But that wasn't the only time he trapped someone. He later, through various uh, happenings, ended up marrying Aphrodite, but Aphrodite, the goddess of love, you know, she liked to uh, spread love around, shall we say. <laughs> and he caught her and Ares in a trap and carry them to Olympus to shame them. He, he's just he's just an amazing character, but we often forget about him, which is not fair because he plays a part in almost every God's story and every hero's epic journey that we can read in Greek mythology because he makes the devices, he makes the weapons, he makes the armor. Zeus's lightning bolts are made by Hephaestus. So many different things are made by him that he touches just about everyone's story, although we don't think about him as much as we do Zeus or Ares or Aphrodite. But he that's why I call him the ugly forgotten god. But he is absolutely one of the, the best. He intercedes with man, he helps man and God alike, and he's just amazing, and that's why we have his temple now. Oh my goodness. <laughs> that time lapse did not reflect how long this build took. It took two days after I designed it, after I got resources. <laughs> oh man. But there were a couple things I really wanted to point out. First is this calendar clock thing behind me on the ground. I saw this in a couple of pictures showing, you know, the mapping of the stars and early clock calendar that people would do. And I thought it was just perfect design wise for Hephaestus as the God of the forge, you know, and all the things that he makes. So instead of putting the big statue here in the front, I put this here and it took a while to figure out how to get these circles just right. <laughs> The other thing I had to work out was I wanted it to be monochromatic, you know, uh, white. It looks like a temple that's gotten dirty over time from Hephaestus using it. And oh, if you've never tried to just work with that kind of limitation, uh, getting all the different variations and colors and blocks and uh, just, you know, every, every other block seems to be different than the other one and it, placing them in survival took forever. It's one of those instances where <laughs> you build it in creative and then you have to actually try to pull it off in survival. And of course that tower up there too, I didn't want this to look medieval or renaissance, I wanted it to look Greek, so I kept stripping it away and I think that that stripped out look actually looks better for like a Greek or Roman style. It also took me a crazy long time to figure out these roofs. You can't really do a terracotta roof in Minecraft, but I think I cracked it. I think, you know, the alternating with the blocks and the trapdoors. I'm really proud of how this turned out. I think it from a distance looks like a terracotta roof. And finally, I want to point out that I'm an idiot. <laughs> I wanted these blocks here. I, what are they, lodestones that required ingots? I, I could have just used like chiseled stone to get it, but nope, I needed 12 of these for the build. <laughs> but I think it turned out beautiful. I love it, and I hope you do too. So, okay. So I said we have some stuff to fill in over here. Let me tell you what the plan is, and then I'm just going to do it, because I don't feel like turning this into a redstone tutorial. Do you? Do you really want a redstone tutorial? Do you? I don't think you do. <laughs> okay, so the plan here is, it's Hephaestus, right? He is the god of the forge. So what are we going to put in here? We're gonna put in a super smelter. Yes, we are, exactly. That's what we're gonna, I'm sure you already knew that before I even said it. I think I have a, another little, I think maybe a um, stone generator and basalt generator over here as well. You know, j just basically filling it up with some gadgets that would be appropriate for Hephaestus. 
Okay, finally we built something that was actually uh, went as planned and smoothly. Uh, believe it or not, this whole contraption went together way faster than this build did. Uh, so I'm super happy how it turned out and I love these types of, uh, <laughs> what, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, super smelters, that's the phrase I'm looking for. Jeez, my brain's not working today. Okay. So, if you're used to super smelters, what you're probably used to seeing is some minecarts going back and forth, feeding fuel and contents into them. And that is actually probably the most efficient one. But I love these. These are piston tape super smelters that push the furnaces around. You use less hoppers. Actually, I think it's less resources to make this style but it can be a little bit more laggy, so we'll have to be careful of when we use it. So, a couple of things to consider when you make it, obviously, is to get the pistons to go around at the right speed. You see we got a double click here on the repeater to slow down so everything will go around correctly. Another thing to consider is your input. So I put in some, uh, some ores that I had sitting around, but if you see, they're not filtering in. There's nothing there in the hopper because we have the hoppers locked. If you see back here, we've got some redstone blocks pushed up against them, locking them. Because you don't want those things to start filtering in until you start running the machine. Otherwise, this one will end up with all kinds of stuff in it and then there'll be a bad distribution of ores and fuel among all the different um, furnaces. But then the next thing for fuel what I wanted to do is get this going up here, this lava farm. And I think over here is a good example. You're able to grab the lava out from underneath. You don't have to be on top to do it. So I can grab, let's see, do I have a bucket on me? Where's a bucket? You can come over here and you can grab from underneath. And as you see, it got darker. So you can tell from underneath which ones are full and which ones are not. And I thought about making a piston tape out of this one, but uh, I'm already worried about lag. I don't need, oh. Is there a goat in my super smelter? Why is, hey, hey, uh, why are you in there? <laughs> okay, we have a helper. We will call him George. He is George the smelter attendant and he will take care of the smelter for us. He'll keep it clean back. You, you'll keep it clean back there? Yeah? Where'd you go, George? Oh dear. Did we lose George already? In this current environment, it's hard to keep workers. <laughs> oh, hey George. All right, you gonna keep things clean? Good, all right, thank you. And then I can fill in, uh, fill in the lava buckets back here. And then we press the uh, lever and it starts running. And there it is, feeding round and around. And you see they're already starting to uh, power up because the fuel is coming in right here. So it's easier to see here. So uh, they're all going around and they're all getting lit up and by the time they get back here, they'll start dumping off their contents. Okay, uh, hey, George. Oh dear, I lost another employee. Ah! What? I know. <laughs> Did you really just headbutt me? I. Okay, just quit. You don't have to, like, be belligerent on your way out the door for crying out loud. It's probably because I didn't pay him. Uh, do you think I should have paid George? <laughs> I, I guess I don't blame him. All right, let's turn this thing off and check out the other farm I have going on over here. This is, each one of itself is a fairly simple thing. It's a basalt generator and a cobblestone generator. And I tried to make it so that you just stand in one location, you just flip a lever, but whenever I realized how easy this was, I just decided to put them on each side. You just stand in here and just start digging away and by the time you get to the end, yep, there we go. Uh, okay, and then the same thing over here. Perfect, working just like it should. And then they come down here. Oh, I still have the remains from when I made it. <laughs> and then they, everything flows down in here 
And uh, beautiful. You know what? I actually could have used this. Hey! What is going on with you, George? I'm I'm gonna report to you. <laughs> I have never had one headbutt me before. Now he's done it twice. No! No! No means no, George! <laughs> Jeez! Okay. Alright. Can I continue now? Can't no! No! I need to continue with my explanation. Whoa! Haha! <laughs> if you jump in the lava, I'm gonna laugh so hard. <laughs> no, I need go away! I need to continue my explanation. Okay. I, I I really needed this basalt generator ahead of time because I had quite a bit of basalt going on in here. Uh, but I just had to go to the nether to get it. Okay. Stay away. <laughs> I'm scared of that guy now. Jeez. Okay. Uh, that oh oh that's almost all of it. And then, of course, I put the big statue symbolic, this hammer, which is perfect for the God of the Forge, back in here. I thought it, it looked beautiful back here in this. I need to light that up up there. But uh, I think this hammer turned out really nice. I had fun with this uh, stair steps alternating, so that makes it look like there's a, a, you know, a leather wrap around the handle. I think it turned out really nice. I love it. Okay, so that's pretty much it for the main part of this build. I still have a cloud to do, which I don't know if I'll get to in this episode, but I had one more thing. It's an idea that I had. Considering that Hephaestus learned his skills while he was on Earth, and that he always seems to con make contributions to both the gods and mankind, I thought I had a fun little idea that I wanted to add. I'm going now, George. I expect you to be gone when I come back. No. No. <laughs> okay, under here, I had the lava continue to flow all the way down. Now I think I'm going to like thicken this, so it's not just one strand, but like a three by three or something. And I thought it might be a fun idea down here. Oh, Enderman, hey. How's it going? I thought it might be a fun idea to build like a, a, a forge of some sort that like mankind can use. So it's like the god is contributing to mankind. So I'm a, I'm gonna play around with a few ideas. I don't really know what I'm gonna do with that yet. I just thought at the last second, as the, as I was putting the lava in, I thought that was kind of a fun idea to kind of add. Because if you look here, um, we've got all these things. Uh, these temples going up, but I thought it'd be fun to have something coming down here. Maybe I'll do like a waterfall coming off of one of the other ones, kind of adding more verticality to these this area. So yeah, let me uh, t go to sleep, I guess, first, and try to come up with an idea for this. I'm still not quite sure what I'm going to do. You know what? After I slept, I have a better idea. Why don't you give me your suggestions on what I should do down below? Should, I, should it be a forge or should it be a shrine? Maybe a lava pit? I don't know. What do you think? I, I, I don't really have a perfect idea of what I want to do down there, so I would love to hear from you and, and then we'll, we'll go from there and, and make a decision about what to do. All right? Okay, well, I've had so much fun today. I hope you have too. Uh, if you've enjoyed it, please leave a like. Uh, but most of all, I really hope that you've enjoyed this episode and that you found it adequate. Mm -hmm.